welcome to the course introduction to electrical engineering. I mean, we will have a today's second lecture discussing the elements in electric circuits. The outline of the today presentation is starting from introduction. We will discuss basic circuits and circuit elements, theoretical questions and exercise numerical analysis. Of course, we will have a some unsolved problem with the references which we have followed for this lecture. Well, coming to the introduction to this lecture and we have that related to that whenever the energy is required on large scale or large power, it is generally not utilized in its original form rather it is converted into electrical energy. I mean the question is why the typical examples are like a solar photovoltaic array converts solar energy in the light form to electricity is upcoming I mean throughout the world at very high pace or the wind turbine converts the wind velocity or wind energy into the electricity and thermal power plant converts chemical energy of fossil fuel into the electricity and of course, the battery converts chemical energy into electricity like I mean, of course, I mean here we can say that the electricity are neither is in, ori in nature in original form not it utilized in the final form. It is only we convert into it and of course, we transmit it as well as finally, we utilize in other form I mean like also. Well, what are the advantage of this energy in electrical form? Uh, it can be transported from one place to another place in efficient manner. I mean the efficiency of transmission is quite high and it flow the for the flow of energy can be controlled pre very precisely efficiently in electrical electricity form. I mean that is another major reason or you can call it the advantage and it is very neat and clean form of energy you cannot see it of course, and it is not visible also it is only flows through electrical electric wires like our electrical conductors and it can be converted to other form of energy through suitable equipment depending upon for which form you want whether mechanical whether you want light or sound. So, there are plenty of form which require probably for human beings for either for comfort or for requirement like typically. So, lot of applications related to mechanical as well as typically of your other form. So, typical examples are uh, it can, can be converted to mechanical energy through a motor as well as maybe some, some other form light energy with the either the bulb or maybe like a typically with the LED uh, available nowadays like um. Of course, there are some disadvantage of this energy in the electrical form. It had to be always derived from some other sources of energy as it is not in available directly in electricity form or in electrical energy form that is the one reason and it cannot be stored on large scale. Therefore, it must be generated as and when required. Of course, we have a very large grid in most of the uh, most of the countries in the world where of course, the power I mean you have a large number of consumers as well as a large number of generators and we call of course, the a large grid like I mean. So, but of course, this couple of disadvantage remains there only like of course, we have a some energy storage, but not certainly of that large scale like I mean also. Well, this electrical engineering could be summarized in the four categories typically the production of electrical energy, then the transmission of electrical energy then application of electrical energy and then of course, control of electrical energy like. So, well all these four I mean aspect typically the first three are related to the efficiency. So, we have a good efficiency of electro this energy conversion from other form either from mechanical to electrical form as well as transmission and as well as application of this electrical energy in may be converting it to mechanical. I mean the these conversion are very high efficient compared to the other form of energy conversion like I mean typically like example I can give you like if you have a like electric typically a vehicle an automobile vehicle the efficiency of converting from chemical energy typically from petrol or diesel to convert your mechanical the efficiency around 25 to 30 percent. However, to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy the efficiency is typically around 96 to 98 percent order of 95 to 96 percent. Moreover, there is a possibility of back regeneration I mean 
we can convert that kinetic energy of the wheel into electrical energy which also can be very efficient and we are able to recover 40 to 50 percent energy and that is the reason that energy consumption in electric vehicle compared to automobile based vehicle I mean it becomes one sixth or one seventh uh, consumption of this electrical energy or the net energy in electric vehicle and that is one of the reason why this electric vehicle at the moment I mean throughout the world is going to increase and of even a federal government of India has decided to by 2030 that all the vehicles I mean must be converted into electrical vehicles like I mean. And of course, the control of this electrical energy is very precise as well as typically measurement is also very precise or accountability is also very precise of this electrical energy like I mean also. Well, a basic electrical system has four constraint or part as the source. The function of the source is to provide the energy for the electrical system that is for example, battery or the generator and the loads. The function of load is to absorb the electrical energy supplied by the source and convert to other form may be a typical example may be like motor, then lamp, heaters depends in which form you are going to convert it like. And part of the electrical system I mean you can just see here it is a source or with the transmission followed by control and then finally, it is the load there like I mean. The control apparatus its function is to control the voltage and current or say power typical example here the switch I mean which you can uh, uh, stop or you can start the power flow through this control. So, in between the control which we are talking about it may be the kind of either the switch or maybe depends on power level it may be a your contactor or it may be large switch like maybe a circuit breaker or other form of the switches like which can be controlled very precisely as well as remotely without much difficulty like on. So, typical example may be here is a you have a generator and you have a switch and followed by the lamp typical lamp system or it can be like a you have a generator and it may be a with the switch you have a lamp bulb as a load unit. And of course, you have a several representation of symbols for different components of electrical system like as simple wire we say they are the wires or conductors then with the circle in the G we write it for the generator and of course, the symbol with the cross with the circle we call it lamp or bulb and of course, with the bar with between the two points I mean the wire we call it the switch. So, sim these are the symbols used of course, in this electrical circuit which is used for the lamp like I mean. Well, uh, we have electrical components I mean the active component we divide typically. So, electrical component is typically a voltage source I mean which are really you can just see typical example may be a battery a DC source and may be a generator may be a DC generator or AC generator. So, those are the typically the sources uh, voltage sources because they keep a almost constant voltage typically across the load or even under open circuit condition. And of course, these are much in practice as a voltage source because most of the load are designed for a particular voltage. I mean, so these voltage whether I mean you are fitting from the battery the most of the load which you might have like a typically a domestic inverter or many other loads which are operated from the battery. Typical example I have told like maybe electric vehicle motor as well as the other accessories in electric vehicle maybe air conditioning your console and control a auxiliary motors I mean they are operated with constant voltage battery like I mean also. And of course, I mean the typical another example may be a generator like DG set I mean or may be the generator typically may be for hydro generators or thermal generator I mean thermo thermal power station generator or maybe or typically even a wind power generator. So, they are AC generator. So, they also give almost like a constant voltage, but of course, with the load voltage may vary, but there is a method of controlling that voltage. So, that the voltage across the load remain constant like I mean also and we have of course, regulating or control system for that. So, another sources which of course, we call it current source I mean the current source are not of course, available in nature so prominently because uh, in that case in the current source if you really can find the current source depending upon the impedance of the load your voltage across the load go on changing. So, those sources are not too much, but we many applications we derive the voltage source with the help of like BJT because that is a current operated device and of course, like a solar photovoltaic array and that also we have like a current source like, but of course, we that current source we do not use directly we might be using from solar PV either from typically by a converter DC DC converter we charge the battery of course, with this current source or typically we might be feeding it to maybe 
uh, to the AC grid by converting the DC into AC or might be using directly for some of the applications from solar directly for maybe for the purpose like induction cooker or maybe for the fans or there are plenty of applications which are coming up like with the solar energy which are fed. But the major benefit of course this in that case is like typically I mean in solar also in current fed that the inner production is there because of the current so because current cannot exceed more than a particular limit like. But of course they are not so much easily available in nature and they are not very extensively used because most of the load are designed for constant voltage so that is why the voltage source are more permanent in nature like I mean also. So, these are of course the you, you can call it active component in electrical engineering and of course we have a passive components which are part of electrical circuit I mean as electrical component like a typically like a register of course register we will be discussing in detail in later on and they are of course used in many of electrical circuits as a part of uh, requirement and of course we have a like a inductors they also use on of course in AC circuit as well as of course somewhere in control of DC circuit also use these co component especially the inductors like common and then the capacitors. So, capacitor these inductor and capacitors are the energy storage device. So, they are also required for these many conversion maybe the DC to AC or DC to DC conversion they are required as the energy storing device like common also and of course the transformer. Transformer of course in AC system is a basic backbone passive device. I mean it does not have its energy, but it convert typically from one voltage level to another voltage level that is one of the major task, but of course it can convert the current level as well as it can provide the transfer of impedance also in many applications, but major application of it is the voltage transformation from one level to another level and also given certainly a big push for the win of AC system last time we discussed like uh, with the AC war and DC war I mean and finally the AC really won. However, we have a many disadvantage of AC system, but still I mean the AC system has gone because you can you can generate at optimum voltage, you can transmit at optimum voltage and then you can utilize that optimum voltage that transformer provide that conversion of the voltage from one level to another and allow the you can call it the best efficiency or best conversion efficiency from for all three conversion either in generation or transmission or typically finally in the utilization like also. So, transformer is very backbone devices for I mean not only for conversion of voltage level, it also provides the isolation also of electrical circuit from one circuit to another circuit. So, isolation as well as you can have a multiple output also isolated output also with the help transformer like even a DC DC converter we use the transformer. So, transformer in electrical engineering you can call it either for even for this earlier AC circuit now even many DC circuit also transformer are extensively used of course for providing uh, isolation change of voltage level apart from because in large change of voltage level isolation is also required like um, and of course getting a multiple outputs also and requirement for the uh, not only for that you require a, you want to connect the multiple load also for that purpose also we use the transformer. So, transformer is a really I mean a very important element as a passive components of electrical energy system like um, so, coming to like a typically your active devices, I mean battery is one, I mean battery are of course of many kind, I mean like you might be having like a 6 this battery cell, then your 9 volt battery cell, I mean then laptop battery, then you have mobile battery, I mean day to day you just look into different battery on 150 ampere hour jumbo tubular battery used for many purpose like. So, these battery you can call it today the day by day their applications are increasing there are the battery which are not rechargeable you might have seen the battery cell and there are now many rechargeable batteries are now in more in practice either you can see here either in your mobile phone or you might have in laptop this battery apart from that even many other applications also as well as the lowest battery you look into for my uh, might be for you even a your all the automobile uh, vehicle also I mean you have initially the battery for the purpose of typically many purpose like not only for starting, but for lighting I mean for air conditioning to so plenty of application have been there. But now in electric vehicle this is become some one of the main source of energy as a storing device like I mean. So, these are the energy storage device or active device I mean electrical engineering and for many purpose I mean their application day by day even a portable tools uh, as well as the even the lot of toys you might have seen which are operated from the DC and there we use the these batteries like I mean. So, there are plenty of application of batteries of nowadays day to day life like I mean 
in your many of the gadgets which you really use, whether it is a watch or whether it is your mobile phone, I mean plenty of applications like or so. Then of course, we have a typically different kind of generator as a active device. So, one is typically maybe residential diesel generator or you might have a typically Honda portable generator. I mean these are the typical name with the trade name for the industry or you have a power big power DG set or generators like of course, these are you can call it the generator used for emergency purposes. I mean like, but there are other generator also which are used for your uh, conventional generator or fossil phase based generation with the help of gas as well as the your coal gas or so. And apart from that we have a generators which are of course, having all these of mechanical motion. These most of these energy other form here the chemical energy converted into mechanical form and that mechanical engine virtually drive your generator to convert into electrical form. But there are of course, the hydro generator, hydro turbines runs the your uh, generator to convert this mechanical energy into electrical energy and of course, you know the solar which give you directly the DC and you have to convert into AC with the help of inverter like I mean also. So, these are of course, we call it typically the generator as a uh, you can call it active devices. Now, coming to the your passive devices typically the resistance which have been in application especially lot of application in spite we know the resistance dissipate the power, but many circuit a majority of the large number of circuit we use this resistor especially in electronic circuit or typically the circuit related for, for your many of the controlling device I mean also measurement devices, control devices and even the typically you can call it electronic devices we use this component passive component I mean like the register however, it is a lossy element and we know, but still we use typically. So, typical example may be you can think about this register as a symbol I mean this is a typical practical shape how the register is made this resistance is of 0 0.1 ohm as shown there and 5 watt this is the specification of this register that it can dissipate with this surface area without blowing or without damaging it can dissipate up to 5, 5 watt and from this you can certainly find out how much current bearing capacity of this or the voltage can be beared across this resistance I mean according to this power. So, you can find out certainly power is given here. So, you can find out the current from here I mean typically from resistance value I mean the I square R equal to your P. So, from this you can find out what is the maximum current can be allowed through this resistance without excessive heating or blowing this register like I mean also. Then you have another shape of register typically of 140 watt it can dissipate as a this TO247 register or there are plenty of other shape like carbon register are used in electronic circuit. They are available in quarter watt as well as we call watt means 0 0.25 watt or 0 0.5 watt or even they are available even up to 1 watt like. And then you have a 5 watt register as it is shown in first and this last as well as you have a wire bound, wire bound registers huge in many application for typically for heating application or many other typical application. And then of course, you have another series of resistance which you have seen here surface mounted register they shown as a like a chip registers use many of electronic circuits I mean so that your electronic circuit you can call it the surface is smooth and it looks like a very and the dissipation is also within limit also. So, these are the typically the resistive elements of different shape and the another element passive element is the inductor which is used in electrical engineering as a typically air core inductor. The advantage of course, of air core inductor is that it does not saturate I mean the flux is the proportional to your current I mean because the air is only in the air. So, you have a linear magnetic circuit, but the major disadvantage is that you do not produce the large flux because the relative permeability of air is quite low. So, you require the large excitation current for producing a some flux here like um. But of course, we use to reduce the excitation requirement for this inductor may be this ferrite core toroidal inductor you can see that the wire is wound on the toroidal core of ferrite I mean which increases the induction many fold. But of course, uh, there is a certainly a nonlinearity involved if this saturate like I mean. So, certainly you have to design at a typically uh, this at a flux density of course, less than 0 0.4 tesla. So, that it this your core does not saturate otherwise you cannot define the inductance I mean inductance will not be fixed it will go on changing I mean with the current also or with the flux or particular MF excitation on this core like um. or you have a typically the laminated core structure. Laminated core structure of course, is required in case of when you are using this on AC 
because it will certainly will have a core losses into it. Apart from that, on wire wound takes a I square losses, but you will have in the core, the core losses also, which is because of the rate change of the current, especially in the AC, we, we apply the voltage which are changing across it and certainly you produce the core losses, eddy current losses as well as hysteresis losses goes into this. So, to reduce this, especially the your eddy current losses will eliminate it, so that uh, the eddy current or eddies which are induced in the your solid iron or solid steel, I mean though that are reduced by providing a insulation in between different laminations. So, you can call it the resistance of this for the eddies are increase and that reduce the uh, amount of current flowing through the this eddies or eddy currents like and that because of this that reduces the eddy current losses in the inductor like and so that it is not dissipating that much power. So, you can define the inductance of course, you have to keep precautions that it also does not saturate with the typically when you are using the large inductor. Of course, the these inductors I mean there are two more important specification one is that for which value of inductance like which is normally in your milli micro Henry or milli Henry or Henry for which value you are designing this inductor apart from that uh, for how much current you are going to design it. So, cross section area of the conductor is decided by the current rating of the induct I mean this inductor how much current you want to pass through it and of course, the number of terms are decided how much the inductance really you want from this. So, the inductance depends certainly on number of tons square and of course, the current depends on cross section area of the inductor. So, certainly length on the conductor will increase if you require more on number of tons to increase the value of the inductance like I mean also. So, but of course, these inductance are required in many many your AC circuit as well as DC circuit for the various purpose when really you want to develop the proper conversion of the power in AC as well as in the DC circuit and for some time of course, I mean typically this inductor are required to take a different voltage drop also across this like in many electrical circuit. So, you can say we have a some time couple inductor, couple inductor the role is that you might be putting the, the two coils in two different circuit and the isolation also may be required between the two circuit and the inductance certainly the coupled circuit provide much higher inductance because not only you have a self inductance of the two coils which are on the same core, but you also have a mutual inductance also between these two coils. So, that really can be additive nature or it can be of subtractive nature. So, you can reduce the net inductance even you keep the two coils in series or parallel. So, you can increase or you can decrease the inductance of individual coil inductances also like common also. Well, then you can have a variable inductor in many application we require a variable inductor also I mean for the purpose of uh, typically of a specific requirement and these certainly provide the variable inductance by certainly intro introducing the either the changing of number of turns or providing the different length of air gap into that. So, different geometries are used for variable inductor like I mean also. Then of course, you have a like a typical example as a variable inductor with the 0 0.5, 0 0.1 micro Henry to 30 micro Henry as a variable uh, inductor of course, with the fixed value I mean that is required in many of the electrical circuit when we are using that these inductors like. So, then another passive component which we talk about is the capacitors they are available of various variety of the uh, value because they are used for typically like we call it low voltage ceramic capacitor they are given like a with this kind of a structure I mean like uh, of course, they are not bound with the polarity like I mean you can have either the voltage polarity either positive or negative. So, that does not affect either you use on AC circuit or you use the on DC circuit and of course, you have a high voltage ceramic, ceramic capacitors also. So, that is for low voltage and this is for high voltage up to order of like as it is in, in a specification itself like typically may be 6 kilo volt up to that it can withstand the voltage across the terminal of the two terminal across this. Then you have a surface mounted ceramic capacitor all these are the ceramic capacitors. So, they do not have any polarity features, but you can understand they offer very low in the capacitance I mean with this of course, with the arrangement. So, but they are very extensive used in electronic circuit or many of the power electronic circuit also like. So, then you have a polyester film capacitors. So, they are also used in again electronic circuit I mean like uh, their value normally is little more I mean compared to ceramic capacitor or axial polyester film capacitor or uh, typically typically 220 nanofarad polyester capacitor which can be used which can be used at 310 
AC, I mean, which are given in a specification. So, they are also used, of course, in many electronic circuit of these capacitors, where, of course, with you will be having voltage appearing across these capacitors of by directional nature of AC or part of AC plus DC, I mean, also. But values are certainly much lower, like. Then we have, of course, the variable capacitors. You might have seen in the mini transistor, we vary the capacitors to tune the frequency. So, do these are the capacitors used on those transistor earlier radio transistor or that, so because you have to tune for different frequency, I mean in those sur analog circuit like I mean. Or you have a typically surface mounted chip electrolyte capacitor, I mean this is the design of course, typically 47 microfarad 35 volt surface mounted chip electrolyte capacitor. So, electrolyte capacitor ha have certainly the polarity, I mean you can connect only in one polarity like with the positive negative sign, but they offer little higher value, much higher value like a 47 microfarad where the we have seen earlier the the ceramic capacitors are of very low value of even either nanofarad or maybe even in microfarad like it might be 0.47 microfarad or 0.1.2 microfarad like order of that in the typically order of similar sizes you can call it like um but of course electrolytic why it is given there the name is there is electrolytic there which can be only typically charged only in one polarity like so that's the reason they are used only on the d in the dc circuit like um then you have a many kind of electrolytic capacitor like typically here you have 47 microfarad 450 volt radial electrolytic capacitor and the polarity is given clearly here that okay you have to connect this terminal log with the negative and another terminal with the positive like I mean they are marked with the polarity. But of course, their size is much smaller they are cheaper compared to your other kind of capacitor for the same uh, microfarad value like and you have a plenty of variety of electrolytic capacitor because they are very extensively used as a energy storage element in case of your electronic circuit even you can find in the electronic circuit every integrated circuit require a part of some capacitors so that the supply voltage is very stabilized across the every IC chip. So, there we require large number of capacitors in any electronic circuits like our so. Then of course, so with after covering with you can call it linear passive element we have a non-linear element also in your electrical engineering or electrical circuits. So, one is one of them is the diode which are also very extensively used. So, this is very famous we call it like I n 4007 or 1 n 4007 p n junction diode. I mean this is very ex extensively used up to it can withstand up to 7 ampere as well as 400 volt. I mean so, most of the circuit we use for in the rectifier or many electronic circuit this, this diode like I mean or so. And you have other Zener diode also, which certainly when it conducts it can take a, a particular kind of I mean voltage typically across the Zener diode like I mean or so, because you say Zener, Zener Alvanci breakdown is there the voltage there. So, sometimes it is used basically for protection of many of the devices put across the many of the IC chips. So, that voltage does not exceed and there we use this Zener diode like I mean or so and you have a light emitting diode. So, I hope you know now, I mean earlier these LED light emitting diodes with different colors they are using as indicators uh, for different kind of the situation like a red is given with the danger or maybe like a traffic light we use this red for the purpose that you have to stop and maybe green we allow to go and of course, the other colors are also used for the display in different electronic circuits or different gadgets. But nowadays we have a white LED which is used very extensively for the lighting purpose like I mean also. So, because these LEDs are very efficient as far as the light emitting is concerned and they operate with very low voltage. I mean normally we apply it not more than typically around 3.5 volt across the LED port to switch on of this though and current required is very also low. So, the LED technology I mean for the lighting system you might have seen for now nowadays it has come very efficient lighting system including compared to the your vapor lamps including your tube light and your compact fluorescent these are considered almost like 100 percent more efficient and it has it is replacing the big way when country like India developing country also we are going we have a last we have seen last decade a very tremendous revolution for very efficient lighting system using this LED uh, system like and they are supposed to be designed for different they are to be energized by DC voltage, so you need a LED drivers for that. But of course, in electronic circuit, we already have a regulated DC supply where we use this LED for different function which I have mentioned there. Like, then of course you have a typically Scotty diodes, which we call it 
with the silicon carbide uh, typically with the 1200 volt and 10 ampere. These sorted diodes considered to be reasonably fast diode and con to consist of very small losses I mean when it is really conducting I mean also. Then you of course have a photodiode which are very very much used for the many applications like your uh, physical application where you want to direct the position like maybe the position I mean we want to use the rotary position or linear position or you, you want to use for the counting purpose when the there is a fraction of the light so you can make a number of counts. So, it, are, it is used typically in many gadgets I mean physical gadgets used for many many practical many practical applications like I mean also or you have a like a surface mounted diode also. So, that of course, the non element. So, now coming to the basic concept of your uh, electrical engineering different quantity. So, we define like a charge which is normally represented by capital Q. So, most uh, basic quantity in electric circuit is the electric charge and charge in electric in an electrical property of a atomic particles of which matter consists measured in coulombs like I mean and one electron carries negative charge of 1.602 10 power minus 19 coulombs and 1 coulomb is equal to 6.24 into 10 to the power 18 electrons. So, the law of conservation of charge states that the charge can be neither be created nor destroyed and only can be transferred like I mean. And typical example here with the electric circuit, so electric current flow of electronic charge in a conductor I mean from if you have a like electrical circuit so and you have a source like a DC source. I mean which can normally represent it. So, there is a current flow, but the electrons flow in just exactly opposite direction as your current flow. So, current flows in case of DC circuit from positive polarity of battery to negative polarity, but the electrons move in opposite direction. Of course, in the same direction we call it a positive barrier that we call in holes like. So, electric current due to the flow of electronics charge in a conductor and electric current is the time rate change of the charge measured in ampere that is we discussed last time on the name of very famous scientist I mean the ampere like. So, mathematically the relationship between the current and the charge when the time is this I equal to d q upon d t. So, we call it the current is the rate change of the charge like I mean also. So, now the current direction depends upon the nature of charge flowing that is the current flows into the in the direction of positive charge flow and in the opposite direction to the negative charge flow. So, you can just see here I mean the I which goes from positive charge barrier I is equal to d q upon d t that is you can see the how the current is current and the this positive charge carrier are moving in a particular direction and how in the second right diagram you can say current is due to negative charge movement. So, current direction is just opposite to the positive negative charge carriers and current is now I equal to d q upon d t. But certainly the movement of you can call it electronics is just exactly to the direction of the current like I mean. And you can say how the current direction are there for the large current. So, magnitude of the current passing through the element depends on the number of charge flowing that is for the large number of the charge flowing current is high and vice versa. So, here the current direction is just exactly I mean like for the large current many charge flowing and a small current very few charge you can call it the charges are flowing I mean. So, that represents the charge carriers like on that case. So, now we can define the current as a like a 1 ampere equal to 1 coulomb per second and the charge I mean Q transferred from time T 0 to T is obtained by Q equal to T 0 to T I d T I mean by taking integration as current have been the derivative of the charge d Q upon d T. So, we can find out the charge transferred in a particular period from T 0 to T is I d T like I mean also. And certainly the you can call it the type of current we have a two type of current we already discussed is DC current and AC current and here it is the DC current which remains constant throughout the time. So, a direct current flows only in one direction and can be constant or time varying of course, but remain constant like, but we have another alternating current I mean is a current that changes direction with respect to the time. So, that we call it alternating current means is polygon changing from positive to negative with respect to the time like I mean also. So, of course, alternating current have a certain benefit I mean especially for you can say because it passes through 0 in one cycle it passes to 0 typically 2 times I mean 
लाइक यू हैव ए फिफ्टी हर्च वी कॉल इट द फ्रिक्वेंसी और फिफ्टी साइकिल पर सेकेंड तो इट पासिस थ्रो जीरो द हंड्रेड टाइम्स तो वैन यू वॉन्ट टू इंटरप्ट द सर्किट और यू कंट्रोल वॉन्ट टू स्विच ऑफ द सर्किट और यू वॉन्ट टू कंट्रोल द सर्किट सटेनली द मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम वैन यू आर इंटरप्टिंग द सर्किट करंट पासिस टू द जीरो एंड दैट सटेनली गिविंग द लॉट ऑफ सेविंग फॉर डिजाइनिंग द योर फिजिकल कॉन्टेक्ट ऑफ द सर्किट इन ए सी सर्किट इट बिकम्स अ मच मच चीपर एज फार एज द मैनुफैक्चरिंग ऑफ योर ए सी स्विचेस लाइक आई मीन कम्पेयर टू द डी सी स्विचेस लाइक नाउ डिफाइनिंग टिपिकली योर द अनदर क्वान्टिटी लाइक कॉल वोल्टेज विच आर नॉर्मली वी कॉल इट वोल्टेज बट यूनिट इज द वी रिप्रेजेंट इन वी ऑन द नेम ऑफ वोल्टेज अनदर साइंटिस्ट वी डिस्कस अबाउट लास्ट टाइम अबाउट दैट इन इंट्रोडक्शन तो द वोल्टेज ए बी बिटवीन द टू पॉइंट्स ए एंड बी इन ए इलेक्ट्रिक सर्किट इज द एनर्जी और वर्क नीडेड टू मूव ए यूनिट चार्ज फ्रॉम बी टू ए मैथमेटिकली वी राइट वी ए बी इक्वल टू डी डी डब्ल्यू अपॉन डी क्यू एंड वेयर डब्ल्यू इज द एनर्जी इन जूल्स एंड क्यू इज द चार्ज इन कुलम तो द वोल्टेज ए बी और सिंपली वी इज मेजर्ड इन द वोल्टेज तो वन वोल्ट इज इक्वल टू वन जूल्स पर कुलम और इट आल्सो रिप्रेजेंटेज इन एज ए वन न्यूटन मीटर पर कुलम लाइक तो दैट इज द टिपिकली यू कैन कॉल इट वी डिफाइन द वोल्टेज लाइक आम तो दिस वोल्टेज इज रिप्रेजेंटेज इन इलेक्ट्रिक सर्किट लाइक एज यू सी विद द प्रोडक्ट स्पेशली फॉर द डी सी और ए सी इवन फॉर डी सी वी से दैट ए पॉइंट इन द दिस सर्किट इज प्लस विद ए एंड माइनस इज बी एंड वी से बिटवीन द पोटेंशियल और द वोल्टेज बिटवीन टू पॉइंट ए बी वी रिप्रेजेंट वी ए बी ऑफकोर्स इट्स रिप्रेजेंटेड विद द माइनस वी बी ए तो यू कैन कॉल इट द विद द पोलिटी एंड इफ यू रियली रिप्रेजेंट वन टू अपोजिट रिप्रेजेंट फ्रॉम बी टू ए तो सटनली दिस वोल्टेज इज माइनस वी बी ए Uh, because of this sign convention and similarly the typically other two circuit the two uh, equivalent representations of the same voltage vab point uh, typically point a is a 9 volt above point b and point b is minus 9 volt point a i mean typically in another b circuit like the voltage or potential difference is the energy required to move a unit charge from reference Uh, you can call it negative point to the another positive point and measured in volts like and in short we write of course the v for the symbol for voltage like um well another quantity we define the power and power is the time rate change of expand expanding or absorbing energy measured in watts and of course symbolically we represent it watt or we represent in kilowatt or represent in megawatt so p we define equal to d upon d uh, w upon dt or डी डब्ल्यू अपॉन डी क्यू और डी क्यू अपॉन डी टी तो दैट फ्रॉम दिस वी रिप्रेजेंट वी इन टू आई वेर वी इज द वोल्टेज एंड आई इज द करंट तो वेर द पी इज द पावर इन वर्ड्स एंड डब्ल्यू इज द एनर्जी इन जूल्स एंड टी इज द टाइम इन सेकेंड्स एंड द पावर पी इज द टाइम वेरिंग क्वान्टिटी एंड इज कॉल्ड द इंस्टेटेंस पावर बिकॉज मेनी टाइम्स वी माइट बी हैविंग दिस पावर चेंजिंग विद रेस्पेक्ट टू द टाइम आई मीन ऑल दिस क्वान्टिटी मे बी लाइक मे बी ऑल्टरनेटिंग क्वान्टिटी लाइक वोल्ट इज करंट एंड पावर सो दे माइट बी चेंजिंग विद द टाइम लाइक आम एन ऑफर especially in ac circuit so we have another quantity we call it energy which present normally in by w or some time in some literature you might have a representation of it by e so you should not get confused for this so energy absorbed or supply by element from t to t0 is represented w equal to t0 to t p into dt or you can say t0 to t vi dt because pp can be represented into v and i on the basis of instantaneous quantity the energy the capacity to do the work measured in joules and the electric power utility company measure the energy in watt hour and where we call it 1 watt hour is the 3600 joules like i mean and this is the virtually the 1 kilowatt hour is the we call it one unit which you might have seen the energy meters in your home or different premises how we can account for the energy for the commercial purpose or for accounting in terms of the your money or so now coming to ele circuit element i mean for electric to of course establish the electric circuit the electrical engineering often deals with the transferring energy from one form to other and this this requires interconnection of electric electrical devices to form a electric circuit so you can say a simple electric circuit is look as an example here that you have a battery and you are connecting a typically a uh, lamp which causes a current to flow from the battery through the lamp like so this total circuit we call it of course uh, electrical circuit like the electric circuit is an uh, interconnection of electrical elements of transferring electrical signal or power from one point to the 
other that we call it electrical electric circuit like that. Well, the interconnection of two or more simple circuit elements form an electric network and if the network contains at least one closed path, it is, a, it is also known as electric circuit. So, several type of circuit elements are used as per the application. So, you can say as a, a the network that is not a circuit because you have a element some elements here and of course, you have a voltage source, but this is not the closed circuit because it is a open circuit. So, we cannot say it is a uh, typically a circuit. It is a network, but not the circuit and the second circuit I mean second network that is a circuit because it is a closed path even with the maybe one kind of your nonlinear element connected to the voltage source. So, that we call it the circuit. So, this is the difference in network and circuit like um, also just to explain like um, also. Well, so elect every circuit is, is a network, but not all the network are the circuit because network not necessary might have a closed circuit like I mean or so, now coming to typically the classification of electric circuit elements, I mean we have a many elements in the electrical circuit which we have seen the circuit a simple circuit earlier. So, we have a linear element, non-linear element, we already discussed I mean the linear or we will discuss of course, the these elements. We might have a another classification of circuit element active and passive and unilateral, uh, unilateral and bilateral elements like circuit elements like. So, defining the different definition for these elements linear and non-linear elements. So, in electric circuit a linear element is an electrical element uh, with a linear relationship between current and voltage and typical examples are resistance inductor and capacitors. So, these are normally the linear elements of course, we have a certain assumption where physically they can change with the temperature also, but we presume that of course, the most of the time they are typically linear element their values are not changing like a linear element obeys the principle of the homogeneity a scaling property and additive property and all the element which are not linear and does not obey the principle of homogeneity like a scaling property and additivity property called nonlinear element the typical examples are diode transistors i mean most of the electronics and your power electronics elements like so typical example here you can call it about the homogeneity property if you have a like a linear circuit or elements consisting, so you are applying a signal like x t and you have a y t and then you can say k x t will be of course, in linear circuit will be k y t I mean. So, this is typically you can call it like a linear circuit. So, for homogeneous system an amplitude cha change in the input result in identical amplitude change in the output. So, that we call it typically the linear circuit element like the similarly we have a like additive property. So, if you have a like a typically input of x 1 t and output x y 1 t or if you have a x 2 t and linear elements you have in the circuit to y 2 t and then when you apply x 1 plus x 2 together in this linear circuit or element then output will be y 1 t plus y 2 t. So, this we call it like a property additive property of this your linear circuit element. So, additive property if the x 1 result y 1 and x 2 result y 2 then x 1 plus x 2 uh, results in y 1 plus y 2 in the output. So, this we call it additive property of electric linear elements like then of course, we have a linear and non-linear element. So, here you can see the voltage and currents are typically proportional I mean in the this V i characteristic of linear element I mean the typically applying the voltage you are having linearly increasing the current in both the circuit either increasing or decreasing, but it is a linear like I mean or so. But in case of nonlinear, you can just see. I mean, the in one, I mean, one side. I mean, with the positive, you can call it the typically positive voltage and negative current. I mean, it's typically increasing, and similarly, even for positive current, positive voltage it is increasing. So you can call it it's a nonlinear behavior. Like I mean, it's not going to be like a proportional manner. Like of course, in linear elements, they are proportional. Like you have a negative voltage, the negative current, and positive voltage with positive current. But in nonlinear, it is not so. You have even a positive voltage, you have a negative current, uh, and you or on the side rising of positive voltage, you might have again the typical positive current. And similarly, you have another nonlinear element where the polarity is not really preserved. Like so, you can see the difference in the characteristic of your linear and nonlinear elements, like which are clearly demonstrated in these diagrams. Like so, you can say in linear elements. I mean, we call it like a slope in V i characteristic. 
I mean, the characteristic of which is linear, then we call it a resistance. Slope of this, we call it the resistance. And of course, in the inductor, if the slope between V and your di by dt, I mean, it is a linear slope that we define like inductance value of the inductive circuit. And then another circuit, if we have a current and dv by dt, a linear slope, then we define as a capacitor. So, all these are the, you can call it the linear slope. I mean, so this that is why we call it the linear element like a register, inductor as well as capacitor like I mean. In case of non-linear element, typically as a, you see the V i characteristic of diode in the forward direction, you will just see you have a forward voltage drop may be for silicon 0.7 volt and germanium it is 0.3 volt and after that I mean the that drop remains constant and the current to go on increasing depending upon the external circuit. But in reverse direction, you have a very small leakage current and after that, I mean there is no much current flows into it by even much higher voltage, but after that you have a breakdown and then you have a large current. So, you see these both side of the characteristic of I and V, they are not of linear nature and that is why this we call it that I would as a non-linear element like. Similarly, you have a BJT, I mean in BJT also the emitter current and the your emitter to base voltage. I mean they have a non-linear relation initially you will not have any current and but after certain voltage I mean you have a some current rising typically in non-linear manner or even a collector current or the base to collector to base voltage you have a like an again non-linear relation for different uh, emitter current. So, that is the reason I mean we have they have a different characteristic V i characteristic of B j t and between the emitter and collector uh, and your collector to base that is why we call it these are the non-linear element and we of course use in the typically lot of electrical circuit or electronic circuit these element diodes as well as the BJT I mean like also. Then we come to active elements, the active element we already discussed what are the active element like a battery which consists of energy and or generators or we have a transistor as well as operational amplifier. So, we call it these as elective element. So, active elements are capable of supplying average power to the rest of the circuit and e.g. like a typically voltage source, current source or transistor or operational amplifier they are capable of supplying the typically you can call it of supply average power to the rest of the circuit like. Then the passive element we already talk about that the resistor, capacitor, inductor and transformer they are the passive element and passive element are not capable of supplying average power to the rest of the circuit they do not store typically any power. So, the these resistor, inductor and capacitor and transformer are passive element like. Then we of course, we have defined bilateral element that is another representation and register capacitor and inductor are bilateral elements means that is the meaning that bilateral elements offer uh, the same impedance resistance or either direction of current flow or for either polarity of the voltage applied across it. So, register inductor and capacitors are certainly the bilateral elements like um, and of course, taking unilateral elements like a transistor or diodes we define the unilateral elements offer different uh, impedance resistance with the change in the direction of current flow through the it or polarity of the voltage applied across it and typical example are diode and transistor. So, you can say the diode in one polarity allow the current to flow with a small drop across it and in other direction it does not allow any current or a small leakage current with voltage drop across it like I mean. So, they are not of course, uh, you can call it bilateral element they are unilateral elements like I mean and use of course, in the electrical circuit like. So, now coming to the typically the register I mean uh, which we use very extensive in electrical engineering this register as a element I mean like of course, this is a lossive element, but we are very extensively use this element in electrical engineering. So, they are of course, of different uh, perception. So, we call it the resistance is or representation by R of L element denotes its ability to resist the flow of electric current It is measured in ohms. And you can see just as a symbolic representation, I mean the voltage is applied and current want to flow it and resistance subtract it. So, this give a good representation how really your resistance restrict the flow of current uh, I mean in electric circuit like. And this resistance of course, depends on the dimensions of the structure. So, at fixed temperature the resistance of a sample of material depends upon the three factors like a length as you can see the length in the piece here and cross section area through which the current is flowing I mean typically and the actual material use I mean the material property 
I mean that is the resistivity. So, R is represented as a rho L upon A, where L is the length of the conductor, A is the cross section area through which current is flowing and rho is the resistivity of the material, the property of the material, different material have a different property. And this resistance is represented as a symbol on the side, side you can see as current flows, I mean from higher potential to lower potential. So, we represent where the current enters with the positive sign and other side we represent as a negative sign. So, the, this kind of current flows, then this kind of the potential difference remains across the register. So, register and circuit representation of resistance like I mean. Then of course, this resistance, I mean we can call it the resistance of a material also depends on temperature and the resistance of all pure material increases with increase of temperature and the resistance of carbon insulator, semiconductors and electrolyte decreases with the increase of temperature. So, we have a material where conductor in case of conductor resistance increases, but in semiconductor material the resistance decreases with increase in temperature. So, this resistance of course, of the conductor is changes with the temperature and that you can call it R t is equal to R 0 1 plus alpha theta 1. So, you can call it the uh, this uh, where the alpha is the temperature coefficient and R 0 is the resistance at 0 degree uh, Kelvin or Celsius and theta 1 is the temperature at which the resistance is to be determined. And if the material is having resistance R 1 at theta 1 centigrade and R 2 is at the theta 2. 2 centigrade, then the alpha is the temperature coefficient at 0 degree Celsius, then R 1 upon R 2 will be the ratio of this and R 0 will cancel out. So, you can say it will be like equal to R 1 upon R 2 will be equal to 1 plus alpha, alpha theta 1 divided by 1 plus alpha theta 2. And this method of course, by changing the resistance sometime we use in the measurement of resistance also in many electrical circuit like on. So, you can call it temperature coefficient of resistance, it is also called in short TCR is the calculation of relative change of the resistance per degree of temperature change and it is measured in ppm per degree Celsius and 1 ppm equal to 0 0.001 percent like. So, example is temperature coefficient of resistance uh, alpha equal to 50 ppm per degree Celsius then means that the resistance will change more than 0 0.00005 ohms per degree centigrade temperature change. And these are the different symbols for resistance to present the resistance in different electrical circuit, different kind of resistances. This is a symbolic representative of different resistance. So, first is the fixed resistance, I mean you just show as a symbol, then you have a, I mean the symbol either you have a like a typically with the kind of uh, representation of zigzag or you have a solid bar and or you have a rheostate with the bar or you have a like a preset resistance with the arrow or you have a potential. Uh, potentiometer kind of represent or you have a preset potentiometer or you have a thermistor I mean like or you have a voltage divider or you have a light de dependent resistors or your strain gauge or your thermal copper or your bare better or you have a non inductive resistor symbol as a no longer you so you have a here the symbol as you can see as a fixed resistance as a box earlier we were using symbols found in old diagrams I no longer use. So, we use in most of the circuit as a for simple representation of a diagram as a box and for available register we use different symbols like with the arrow means it is a variable register or maybe a rheostatic representation as with the arrow with the fixed point or we have a potential meter kind of representation which also use many circuit for variable. These are the symbols of a different kind of resistances as a circuit element. So, what do the register do in a circuit? I mean they are used as a potential divider, biasing register, operational amplifier gain and feedback in feedback, then current limiting element, impedance for purpose of impedance matching. They also use current measuring element, I mean the voltage across the resistance, I mean consider as a current measurement because many instrument like uh, your CRO especially the digital CRO or CRO cathode oscilloscope, they normally or digital oscilloscope. They, you, they measure only the voltage. So, you just measure a voltage across the resistance in a circuit and that can you, you know the value of resistance. So, you can calculate the value of the current or even the calibration of the current is there automatically there and as well as use data and address bulb push up pull ups like and 
another type of they are many different type of register and they can be made from various material like. So, depending upon the application different type of registers can be used and two type of register typically linear fixed and variable and non-linear I mean like you can just see the here variety what kind of I mean resistance registers we have linear registers are like com carbon composition wire wound thin film carbon film metal film then thin film metal oxide ceramic cement and fusible oxide like and nonlinear are like a thermistor you might have heard, heard about the thermistor as a some measuring device in use in different uh, application like maybe like a refrigerator for uh, typically calibrating the temperature then varistor photo register surface mounted register and as a variable like a potential meters or rheostat or time trimmers like so these are the different kind of register used in typically in electrical engineering like I mean also then of course the symbolic uh, as a carbon composition, composition I mean resistance represented with the color code I mean and we will discuss of course color code and that connected with the lead like or you have a like wire wound in rheostat typically how it is there the different elements of it or you have a typically metal type metal film type register like I mean. and or you have a set typically varistor I mean typically the resistance here or you use the thermistor how it is represented as a thermistor as element you can just see as a symbolic or photo register these are for practical or the potentiometer linear non-linear potentiometer so all are required for different application or rheostats or you your trimmer registers so these are practical photographs of the different kind of product of registers so the material which permit current to flow or the conductor while those do not permit the current to flow the are known as a your insulators. So, the conductors typically are made of copper, aluminum, silver and typically platinum and bronze and gold. So, and insulator are glass, rubber, plastic, air, varnish, paper, wood, mica, ceramic and certain oils like and resistivity is the property of the material and the resistivity of the insulator are higher than the conductor and the typical example of the resistivity of different common materials typically one of the best conductor is consider the silver which have very low resistivity of order of 1.64 into 10 to the power minus 8 ohm per meter a 1 meter length will have a this much resistance then followed by copper aluminum gold carbon germanium silicon paper mica so it goes the table goes for different resistivity goes from starting from conducting material to your insulating material. So, you can say telephone have a very high resistivity of 3 to 10 to the power 12 in meter uh, ohm per meter uh, typically and of course, these are insulator. So, you divide virtually these based on resistivity into three part the conducting material or conductors or semiconductors I mean as well as the insulators like depend upon resistivity property of the materials like. Then of course, we have a color coding of this resistance used to define the value of resistances and different numbers of color band are used for the resistance value and depending upon the number of bands typically each color band has a specific value in the code. In order to get the value of resistance we need to decode the color bands and the first second and third band are used to indicate the resistance of resistor by means of a color code. So, the typically the color code of resistance represents the different digit like 0 to 9 with the black brown red orange yellow green blue violet gray white they are of course used in the terminology in different way and of course toler tolerance you have with the different color 5 percent tolerance with the gold uh, I mean bar and 10 percent with the silver bar and no tol no color band is 20 percent tolerance like and typically the form left to left to the first color band on the register indicates the first significant value and second color band indicates second value and so on and each color band is decoded as a digit example red means 2 as it is in shown in the table and 2 means the yellow means 4 as represented in the table like and you can say these are the typically number of color bands. So, first band then the three color bands it is the first digit and four color bands again first digit and five color band. So, these are six I mean color bands you might see in the register from three bands to six bands and what these different 
you can call it the bands represent I mean here in the two and different bands and of course, six band represent the temperature coefficient and also. So, typical examples if you have a four band register, first digit represents your uh, first digit of the region, second digit represents the second digit and third uh, color represents the multiplier and uh, your last one represents the fourth band represents the tolerance like. If you have a five band register, the first digit first color is the first digit, second color is second digit and third color is third digit and then the fourth band is the multiplier and the fifth is your tolerance like. And if you have a six color band register, the first color is your first digit, second color is second digit and third color is third digit, then fourth digit is multiplier, then fifth is your tolerance and sixth is your typically temperature coefficient like. To just to explain with the example here. So, a register is marked as follows, first band is brown, second band is uh, black and third band is orange. So, no other band, so what is this resistance value between the what value the lie. So, first band is first unit, second band is 0 for the black and third is the orange that is for 3 0 and so the value is your 1 4 0. So, it comes your 10,000 ohm or 10 k ohm. So, since no no further band is given in the tolerance, it, if there is no color then 20 percent is the tolerance. So, resistance lie between 10 k plus 2000, 10,000 plus 2000 or 10,000 minus 2000. So, it varies from your 12 kilo ohm to 8 kilo ohm. Now, with the example here find the resistance value for the given color code register. So, here we have a 4 band a register 5 band register and 6 band register with different colors like on. So, you can just see here the first resistance which have a 3 uh, colors. So, you have a first color as a first digit second is the second one and third is the typically third and then the you have a. So, if you look into first color is the green. So, that is with the 5 and second color band is your blue that is 6 and then you have a this multiplier with the your typically the orange that is typically the 1000. So, it becomes like a 56 kilo ohm and the tolerance of course, it is here the you can call it the gold. So, that is typically represents the your tolerance order of your 5 percent like on also here. And the second resistance is with 5 brand. So, first 3 color band is the your digit and fourth is multiplied. So, first is the yellow that is present 4 here. The second is your violet. So, that is 7 and then the typically your third is the black. So, that is you can call it the your third digit. So, that becomes 0. So, it is 470 and red is for again 2. So, it is a 470 into 100. So, that become again 47 k and since it is a silver. So, it is a 10 percent tolerance. So, you have a 47 plus minus 10 uh, percent like. So, 6 brand 6 band is having your 3 digits and then multiplier as you can see and then followed by the tolerance of and then temperature coefficient like you have here like. So, that should again represent the 56 kilo ohm plus minus 5 percent because it is a you can call it gold have it that much tolerance with the temperature tolerance of like a 15 percent like common in ppm per degree Celsius like. So, now coming to this uh, typically basic principle of called Ohm's law we discussed who invented this Ohm's law on the name of Ohm's. So, in many conductors voltage is property to the current flowing between them provided that the temperature remains constant. So, V is proportional to I as you can see in the graphical representation also as you apply more voltage current also increases and this proportionality constant we call it R. So, we call it V in equal to I into R or R is represented as a slope of this line that is V upon I. So, that way we of course, have a Ohm's law which present in this electric circuit like on. So, this resistance here you can just define typically as a short circuit I mean in electric circuit for short circuit V is equal to I R equal to 0 that represents the 0 resistance showing that the voltage is 0, but the current could be anything in that. And here another circuit we call it open circuit where resistance is infinity for open circuit I equal to 0 that is V upon R. So, we can say showing that the current is 0, but the voltage could be anything because resistance is infinite like. So, defining the other circuit element like conductance that is reciprocal of your resistance and that is represented by G 
तो वी कॉल इट वन अपॉन आर और आई अपॉन बी जस्ट रेस्पिकल ऑपरेशन तो कंडक्टेंस इज द एबिलिटी ऑफ एलिमेंट टू कंडक्ट इलेक्ट्रिक करंट एंड इज मेजर्ड इन मोह और सीमेंस एंड दैट इज वन सीमेंस इक्वल टू वन यू कैन कॉल इट वन अपॉन ओम एंड दैट इज वन एम्पियर अपॉन वोल्ड लाइक then power dissipated by resistance we already discussed p equal to vi this also current is you are you can call it v upon uh, i to you can or v equal to i r to is represented i square r or v upon v square by r so the power dissipated by resistance may also be expressed in terms of g to p equal to vi or v square g or i square upon g like so it can be represented power can be represented in terms of resistance or the conductance like so the series connection of different register so for n resistance in series r1 r2 and r3 or rn so equivalent resistance will be a sum of all these resistances are equivalent to r1 plus r2 plus r3 equal to rn and similarly for n parallel resistances r1 r2 r3 and rn we call it 1 upon rq equal to 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 plus 1 upon r3 i up to 1 upon rn that is the parallel connection equivalent resistances like and similarly for we can have a for n conductances in series so i mean this all conductance i mean coming in series we say 1 upon g equivalent equal to 1 upon g1 plus 1 upon g2 plus 1 upon g3 up to uh, 1 upon gn similarly for n parallel connection of resistance we call it like a n conductance will be g equivalent to g1 plus g2 plus g3 equal plus up to gn or so so we take the circuit with the convenience whether we should take conductance or we should take the resistances so, so if three circuit is there we take normally in terms of your resistances and if in case of your parallel circuit the con we take the conductance because calculation becomes the easier in that form like also then coming to the capacitor well the capacitor which is normally represented in the circuit like called c the capacitance is the ratio of the charge of one plate of the capacitor to the voltage difference between the two plates and measured in farad and uh, of course c equal to q upon v and one farad is equal to one coulomb upon one volt so all the capacitance c of the capacitor is the ratio of the charge q per plate to the applied voltage v and it does not depend on the q or v it depends on the physical dimensions of the capacitor because this capacitor we consider as a linear element of the electric circuit like so we can say your again the relation between q and v q proportional to v or we can call it q is equal to cv as you can see in the circuit that you have a charge i mean voltage is applied so positive charge and negative charge so where the q is the charge stored by capacitor and v is the applied voltage across the capacitor and c is the proportional to constant known as the capacitance of a typically of capacitor like how we define similarly as a i mean in relation between your q and v as it we have defined the relation between your v and i as a resistance like here so a capacitor consists of two conducting plates separated by an insulator so this capacitor in general three factor determine the value of capacitance the surface area of the plates the larger the surface area the greater the capacitance the spacing between the plates the smaller the spacing the greater the capacitor and the permittivity of the material that is the property of the material the higher the permittivity higher the greater the value of capacitance like so the capacitance of a capacitor depends upon three factors dielectric material in the plate cross section area of the plate and distance between the plate so c equal to eta a upon d where a is the cross section area of this plate and d is the distance between the two plates and your eta is the permittivity of the dielectric material field between the two plates like similar to what we define the in resistance like and the capacitance here symbolic it is defined here that current is flowing through the capacitor and voltage across i mean represented with the plus minus sign in the same way as the resistance that is for fixed capacitor and variable capacitor of course we have a here representation with the arrow of variable capacitor like so the vi correct cor cor relationship of a capacitor is q equal to cv or dq upon dt equal to c of course taking a derivative of so it will be c dv upon dt and we can call it c the independent of time so dq upon dt will be equal to i or it will be equal to c dv upon dt like common and you can have a relation between i and dv upon dt as a slope of this characteristic as a c and the vi relation for capacitor v equal to 1 upon c into i i mean 
your integration from t 0 to t as a i d i t as a function of time into d t plus v 0 t that is the initial voltage across the capacitor when you start charging this capacitor from a current i. So, where v t 0 equal to q 0 t upon c is the voltage across the capacitor at time t 0 and above equation shows that the capacitor voltage depends on the past history of the capacitor current hence the capacitor has memory like. So, energy stored by a capacitor the instantaneous power delivered to the capacitor is p equal to v i or c v up into d v upon d t energy stored in the capacitor is therefore, w equal to your minus infinity to t p t into d t or c minus infinity to t v d v upon d t into d t or c in minus infinity to t v d v or you can call it c into v square upon 2 from voltage at minus infinity to v t. So, considering the charge was was un, uncharged. So, from at t minus 0 it was 0 voltage across it or it was uncharged. So, then you can call it w stored energy in capacitor is half c v square or w equal to or you can call it q square upon 2 c. So, important property of capacitor is capacitor is an open circuit to dc in a steady state and voltage on the capacitor cannot change abruptly that is it must con be continuous like. So, we have a different type of capacitors electrolyte capacitor, micro, mica capacitor, paper capacitor, film capacitor and non polarized capacitor and ceramic capacitor. So, these are the different photographs you can see of the different type of capacitor like electrolyte how it look like, mica capacitor how it look like and paper capacitor how it look like. And then of course, the film capacitors, then non polarized capacitors and ceramic capacitors the photograph of different kind of. Then of course, the capacitor property voltage capacitor allowed to change linearly or increase or decrease linearly, but not allowed abrupt change because the energy cannot change suddenly. So, capacitor register an abrupt change of in the voltage across it and according to V i correct relationship of capacitor a discontinuous change in the voltage required an infinite current. So, which is physically impossible so, conversely the current through the capacitor can change abruptly like. So, the pop capacitor property the ideal capacitor does not dissipate energy it takes power from the circuit when it store energy in it in its field and return previously stored energy when the delivering power to the circuit. A real non ideal capacitor has a parallel model leakage resistance which is very high and can be neglected for most of the practical applications. So, of course, we have a some time even a equivalent series resistance also represent in some of the capacitors like on. So, this is you can call it for n parallel uh, n series capacitors in series equivalent capacitance is 1 upon C e q equal to 1 upon C 1 plus 1 upon C 2 plus 1 upon C 3 up to 1 upon C n that is equivalent capacitance and for n parallel capacitor C equal to C 1 plus C 2 C 3 up to C n that is for equivalent of parallel capacitors. Now, coming to typically the inductors. So, the inductor if the current allowed to pass through the inductor it is found that the voltage across the inductor is directly proportional to the time rate or change of the current that is v proportional to d i upon d t or we define v equal to proportional law as l d i v d t. So, l is the constant of proportionality which is called inductance of the inductor and inductance is the property where the inductor exhibits opposition to the change of current flowing through it and measured in Henry like. So, you can call it the inductance is defined in terms of dimensions l equal to n square mu a upon l where l is the length of the you can call it the inductor and n is the number of turns and the core material it depends on core material with the cross section area of A. These are the typical inductance you can define. So, if you want to increase the let us say inductance you have to increase the number of turns that increases the length also and A is the typically cross section area I mean typically even of the current carrying capacity of course, depends on the conductor cross section area also. So, inductor is a passive element designed to store energy in the magnetic field and inductor consists of coil of conducting wire and the representation of this inductor is your you have a typically air core inductor there is no core with the current flowing with the voltage across it plus minus and the iron core as a bar two bar of core that is your again the inductance here with the and variable iron core as a with the arrow I mean the representation in circuit like. So, typically as a relation linear relation of this we call it V equal to L d i by d t or d i equal to 1 upon L to V d t 
and of course, the in graphically present the relation this inductance has a slope of a relation between voltage and T i by d t. So, integrating both side we can say i is equal to 1 upon l into integration minus infinity to T v t d t or i equal to 1 upon l minus T 0 to T v d t into T plus i at the T equal to 0. So, where i t is equal to 0 is the total current for the minus infinity to t to t 0 and i minus infinity 0. So, idea of uh, making i at infinity 0 is taken as a practical and reasonable because there is must be a time in the past when the there was no current in the inductor. So, energy stored in the inductor again the power delivered to the inductor is p equal to v i and can be presented l d i by upon d t into i and when you take energy stored. So, you can take integration of power w equal to minus infinity to t p t into d t and l minus infinity to t d i upon d t into i into d t and that you can represent as a l into minus infinity to i d t d i or half l i square t minus i square minus infinity and since i infinity minus infinity is 0. So, you can say w equal to half l i square that is the stored energy in the inductor I mean like and you can say property of the inductor here current through the inductor is allowed to linearly change and then constant and not allowable sudden abrupt change as you can see in the second diagram. So, on vi characteristic the voltage across the inductor is 0 when the current is constant because there is no rate change of the inductance. So, you cannot say the voltage thus the inductor act as a like a short circuit to a DC and current through the inductor cannot change instantaneously. So, at the discontinuous change in current will require infinite voltage across it. So, the like the ideal inductor the ideal in ideal capacitor the ideal inductor does not dissipate energy and energy stored in, in it can be retrieved at a later time. A practical non ideal inductor has a significant resistance component due to the winding of conducting material such as copper and resistance is called the winding resistance R w and it appears in series with the inductance of the inductor as a representation like. So, this as a inductor property we say L in series with R w that is the wire because of wire I mean this resistance is there and of course, we have a in a practical a coupling capacitor also. So, I the non ideal inductor also have a winding capacitance C w due to the capacitance coupling between the conducting coils like. So, type the type of the inductors are air core inductor, laminated core inductor, ferrite core inductor, bobbin core inductor, toroidal inductor, axial inductor and multi layer chip inductor like and you can see here how it look like a air core inductor there is no core in that or laminated core inductor or you have a like a ferrite core inductor how it is wound with physically how they look into in photograph or your bobbin inductor which are wound on bobbin or turtle inductor or axial lead inductor or you have a typically various type of inductor like a solvent wound inductor followed by turtle inductor and your axial lead inductor with a ferrite typically core inductor. And here n inductors in series equivalent inductance is sum of L equivalent to is L 1 plus L 2 plus L 3 up to L plus L n and parallel inductor of course, similar to resistance 1 upon L q equal to 1 upon L 1 plus L 1 upon L 2 plus 1 upon L 3 plus up to 1 upon L n like. Now, typically coming to the diode. So, we have a diode here with the polarity as a symbol represent represented with the arrow with the bar and bar represents the cathode like an anode represents the typically the direction of it and in circuit symbol it is on one side and on the kind of your silver on the other side that is really represents the cathode. So, diode is a nonlinear element it is two terminal semiconductor device that acts as a switch and diode permits the current to flow steadily in one direction from anode to cathode, but it tends to prevent the flow of current from in the other direction from cathode to anode like and there are different kind of anode diodes like a generic diode, zener diode, sortie diode, light emitting diode, tunnel diode and photodiode. And these are the typical photographs of different kind of diode starting from generic diode, zener diode, scotty diode, LED diode, light emitting diode, tunnel diode and photodiodes. And diode biasing, I mean we represent it here as a p n junction diode. So, current I d is 0 milli ampere and there is a typically kind of biasing as a 0 voltage and when you have a typically like a here the V d voltage across this when the typically the current 1 to I have a opposite typically and forward 
I mean it is a similar to ID with a small voltage drop across it. So, various biasing of diodes, no biasing, reverse biasing and forward biasing. And the characteristic VI characteristic of diode is here of course, in forward direction we have seen you have a definite voltage drop when it conducts in forward direction. Germanium have a 0.3 diode volt and silicon have a 0.7 diode volt and of course, reverse up to reverse saturation you have a small leakage current up to certain of course, no, almost negligible current, but after certain voltage it is the breakdown voltage where the even this large current can flow and it may damage because of large heating across the diode. So, normally we do not use up to that large voltage this diode like. Then you have a ideal versus practical diode. So, ideal diode will present it as a uh, you can say forward bias and as a kind of reverse bias. So, ideally diodes will we have like a short circuit during the forward bias condition with 0 voltage drop across it and the reverse bias region it should be open circuit with 0 current passing through it. But of course, practical diodes do not have that like I mean. So, you can just see here you have a here the the 0.7 voltage drop in forward when it conducts and reverse direction current it typically uh, you have a ideally 0 current, but there is a some 10 milli ampere very small leak leakage current like. So, practical diode exhibit a small on state voltage drop across it during forward voltage bias condition and during reverse bias condition it also have a small leakage current passes through it which called reverse saturation current like. And you have a piecewise linear equivalent circuit as a diode as a simple then you have a voltage drop across 0.7 voltage drop and with the resistance of 10 ohm with the ideal diode and how the characteristic represented as a here of this diode like come. Um, so, that is component piece by the equivalent circuit. So, the practical diode can be approximated with series connection of ideal diode, ideal resistance and the ideal voltage source like. The sorty equation for the diode, the general characteristic of a semiconductor diode can be defined by the following equation referred to as a sorty equation for the forward and reverse bias region I d equal to I s and e to power V d upon N V t minus 1, where I s is the reverse saturation current and V d is the uh, applied voltage forward bias voltage across the diode and N is the ideality factor which is a function of the operating conditions and physical construction it has a range between 1 and 2. The sorty this uh, the voltage in sorty equations is called thermal voltage and is defined as a V t equal to k t k upon q, where the k is the Boltzmann constant equal to 1.38 uh, into 10 to power 23 j upon k and t k is the absolute temperature in Kelvin that is 273 plus the temperature in Celsius and q is the magnitude of electro electronic charge that is 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb. Now, coming to theoretical problems. So, first question is what materials are generally used as conductor? The copper, aluminum, brass, iron, phosphorus, bronze, silver, zinc, tungsten, nickel they are used as a your conductor conducting material. What is the material generally used in insulator? Mica oil, impregnated paper, vulcanized, rubber, glass, bakelite, porcelain, one is cotton and wood they are used as a insulators like. What is the property of a good conductor? A good conductor must have the following property low resistivity, less variation in resistance with temperature, good mechanical strength, less specific weight, high resistance to corrosion, and high ductivity. ductivity. So, what is the resistance? The resistance is the property of substance which opposes the flow of current through it. And what is the unit of resistance? The unit of resistance is ohms. And what is the relation among the resistance length and cross section area? Resistance varies directly proportional to the length and inversely proportional to cross section area. The resistance is proportional to length upon a cross section area. So, R equal to rho upon a, L upon A, where length L is the length, A is the cross section area and rho is the resistivity and that represents the resistance in ohm. Define the ohm's law. The ohm's law states that at the constant temperature, the current flowing to the circuit is directly proportional to the potential difference across the resistance. And question is, can you apply the ohm's law to all types of electrical conductors? Answer is no, Ohm's law can be applied only in the cases of conductor through metals and electrolytic conduction and it cannot be applied in the cases of conduction through the ionized gases and semiconductor. I mean what is the elect in electric circuit what are the types? The electric circuit is a complete diverse, diverse path for the flow of electric current which consists of supply source of supply connecting wires switches and load resistances 
and there are three types of circuit closed circuit open circuit and short circuit so what is a series circuit series circuit is a circuit in which the same current flows through the all the devices and what is the parallel circuit parallel circuit is the circuit in which the same voltage appear or occur all the devices and question 12 what is the value of resistance which has a first three color band as a red black and orange so that comes as a 20 kilo ohm so coming to the like a sold power numerical problem so the total charge entering a terminal entering a terminal is given by q equal to 5t into sin 4 pi t calculate the current at t equal to 0.5 second so here the i is equal to dq upon dt or d upon dt 5t sin 4 omega t milli coulomb per second or equivalent to by taking a derivative it become fine plus 20 cos 5t in milli ampere at t 0.5 i mean the value is calculated 5 sin 2 pi plus 10 pi cos 2 pi that is becomes 31.42 milli ampere then. So, determine the total charge entering in terminal between t equal to 1 that and t equal to 2 if the current passes through terminal is the i equal to 3 t square minus t. So, you can find out the charge t q equal to t equal to 1 to 2 1 to 2 3 t square minus t or taking a integration is t 3 t q minus t square by 2 1 to 2. So, you put the value it comes 8 minus 2 equal to 1 minus 1 upon 2 so that comes 5.5 coulomb or c. Uh, question 3 the energy source forces a constant current of 2 ampere for 10 seconds to flow the through a light bulb if 2.3 kilo joules is given off in the form of light and heat energy calculate the voltage across the bulb to answer the total charge delta q is i into delta t that is 2 into 10 20 coulomb and voltage drop will be delta w upon delta q that is 2.3 into 10 power 3 divided by 20 and that is 115 volt the question 4 is to move the charge q from the point to point require 25 joules find the voltage drop v a b the voltage of positive with respect to the p if q equal to 5 c and q equal to minus 10 c so the first case v equal to delta q upon delta v delta w upon delta q equal to 25 by 5 a 5 volt and b case v equal to delta w upon delta q that is 25 minus 10 divided by minus 10 that is minus 2.5 volt the question 5 find the power delivered to an element at t equal to 3 millisecond if the current flowing current entering in positive ml is the i equal to 5 cos cos 60 pi t ampere and the voltage is a equal to v equal to 3 i and v equal to 3 d i by d t. So, answer a is v equal to 3 i that is putting the value of your typically into i into it. So, 15 cos 60 pi t that is p equal to v i into v i that is 75 cos square 60 pi t and 3 millisecond putting the value p v i t 75 cos square 60 into 3 into 10 power minus 3 it becomes 53.48 watt and b case is v equal to 3 d i upon d t that is 3 upon d i by t depicting a value of i 5 cos 60 pi t that is 905 sin 60 pi t and p equal to v i into minus 45 100 into pi sin 60 pi t into cos 60 pi t and t at 3 millisecond it is a p equal to minus 45 uh, sin 0.18 pi into cos 0.18 pi that is minus 6.396 cos uh, k ohm kilowatt. To find the power delivered to an element at t equal to 5 millisecond if the current entering in the positive terminal is i equal to 5 cos pi over 2 and the voltage is v equal to 2 i volt. So, v equal to uh, 10 plus 5 into 0 to t into i dt. So, answer will be v equal to 2 i 10 cos 60 pi t. So, p equal to v i and that is 50 is cos c square 60 pi t at t equal to 5 millisecond keeping the value of this time p equal to 50 cos c square 65 into 5 into 10 to the power minus 3 becomes equal to 17.27 watt like and in b case v equal to 10 plus 5 into integration 0 to 2 i t so power becomes v i into 10 plus 5 into integration 0 to t i d t equal to 5 cos 60 pi t and that become p equal to v i or equal to 10 plus 5 into 0 to t 5 cos 60 pi t into t t into cos uh, 5 cos 
60 pi t at t 5 second p becomes 29.7 watt. So, coming to 7th question, a home electric heater draws 10 ampere when connected to 115 volt outlet, how much energy is consumed by the heater over a period of 6 hour. So, p equal to v i 115 to 10 that becomes 150 watt or 1.15 kilowatt and w equal to p into t. So, 1.15 into 6, so this becomes 6 kilowatt kilowatt or hours like or 6.5, 6.9 unit. How much energy does a 100 watt electric bulb consume in a 2 hour? So, w equal to p into t 100 watt into 2 hour into 60 minute per hour into 60 minute per second. So, it is a 7000, 7000, 720000 joule or it is a 720 kilo joule and this can be stated w equal to p t into 10, 100 into 2 into 200 watt hours or 0.2 kilowatt hour. To calculate the charge stored in 3 picofarad capacitor with 20 volt across it, also find the energy stored in the capacitor. So, be equal to Cv that is 3, 3 into 10 to the power minus 12 into 20 or equal to 60 into 10 to the power minus 12 coulomb or it is all called 60 pico coulomb. Energy storage is half Cv square equal to half C, half 3 into 10 to the power minus 12 into 400. So, that becomes 600 pico joules. So, question 10. Determine the voltage across two microfarad capacitor if the current throw it is i equal to 6 into e to power minus 3000 t milliampere. Assume that the initial capacitor voltage is 0. So, answer is since v equal to 1 upon c into 0 to t i d t and v plus v 0 initial condition and here the initial capacitor voltage is 0. Hence, v equal to 1 upon 2 to power minus 6 and 0 to t 6 into minus 3000 t into 10 to power t and putting the value. I mean, this becomes like a 6 into 10 to power 3 divided by minus 3000 into 2 power 10 to power 6 and e to power 3000 t into 0 to 2. So, that becomes 1 minus e to power 3 minus 3000 t volt. Uh, question 11, determine the current flowing through a 2 100 uh, microfarad capacitor which voltage is shown from varying from 0 to uh, 50 in 2 seconds with the minus and the voltage across the world can be described mathematically v equal to 50 for 0 to 1 second 50 and 100 minus 50 and 2 minus 250 about this function as 0 otherwise. So, you can call it since i equal to c dv upon dt and c is 200 microvolt. So, we can take a derivative of v to obtain i equal to 200 into 10 power minus 6 50 minus 50 and 50 for different time period and becomes 10 milli ampere minus 10 ampere and 10 ampere and 0 and the current certainly can be represented as a kind of square wave with representation here as a diagram. So, question 12, if the current flowing through 1 milli Henry inductor is I equal to 90 sin 200 T milli ampere, find the terminal voltage and the energy stored. So, V equal to L dI by dt and say 1 milli Henry 1 into 10 power minus 3 d upon dt 90 sin 2 200 T and 90 into 200 10 power minus 3 cos 200 T and that becomes 18 cos 200 t and w equal to half l i square. So, half into 1 into 10 power minus 3 into 90 square sin square 200 t into 10 power minus 6 and that becomes 4.05 sin square 200 t micro joules. A question 13, a coil of copper wire of 200 meter long and the cross section area of 0.8 millimeter square has a resistivity of 0 0.02 micro ohm meter at normal working temperature calculate the resistance of the coil. So, here L length is 200 meter, A is a 0.8 millimeter square and rho is the 0 0.02 micro ohm meter. So, from the formula of R equal to rho L upon A, so R comes 2, on 2 into 10 power minus 8 into 200 divided by 8 into 10 power minus 7. So, it becomes R equal to 5 ohm. So, there are some unsolved problem which you can exercise about typically of different natures and what typically the resistance value of color and these are the references which we refer for this lecture. Thank you.